Okay, here we have Next Car Game. What is Next Car Game? Well, it's an early access alpha release game on Steam that I just recently purchased because, well, I liked uh, kind of what it was talking about and it looked kind of cool. And I thought, hey, why not? I don't usually buy early access games because really uh, you're taking a gamble. You know, are they going to finish the game? Is it going to be worth the money, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Uh, this one, I took a chance. The price wasn't unreasonable. I don't remember what I paid now. Uh, it comes up on deal every once in a while, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I thought, why not give it a shot? It's also from a uh, somewhat of a well-known developer. They've developed some other things, the Flat Out series, things like that. So, you know, I felt like I could take a chance. And let's see what we've got. This is the uh, screen you come into when you uh, load the game. Actually, the first screen you come to is a, uh, a graphics screen that kind of gives you some options. Not many, but a few uh, for setup. So I've got everything pretty much middle of the road. That seems to be running pretty well. So when you come in here, you're in your garage. As you can see up here, there's these other tabs, but none of them actually do anything yet. So I'm, I'm assuming that's uh, something that's going to come along later. Hoping, anyway. Uh, so yeah, garage is here. You can't actually uh, look around your car, which I think is something that they need to add to give you a little more uh, in-depth, you know, feel for your vehicle. Uh, and, and that'll become apparent here in a minute. So when you start off, you have two choices of cars. There's the American muscle car, which is, you know, appearing to be a combination of the Camaro, the Firebird, probably a Mustang in there too. And then you have the European car, which very much looks like an old Mini Cooper, but is probably kind of blended. Um, Cooper, maybe a Fiat, I don't know. All mixed together. So you can assume this one's probably better on cornering, whereas this one's probably faster just straight out. And I would imagine also tougher in the demolition derby parts of this. Uh, on each car down here, there are these little tabs. Again, none of them actually do anything, but uh, they show potential. Uh, repair your car. Research. I'm not sure what that's about. Car info. Test drive. Sell car. And set as favorite. Uh, you can change parts. You're not changing a lot of parts, but you can. Right now, your options are pretty much limited to one set of three different tires. Standard gravel or tarmac which is you know pavement uh, engine choices 2 152 220 the American car is the same way three different types of tires and two engines the 300 and the 500 horsepower um, yeah I've tried the 500 horsepower one out uh, it's pretty much nothing but wheel spin so there, there needs to be some adjustment there but uh, we're gonna stick with the 300 horsepower right now Let's go with tarmac tires. Got it, oh, and it does change it there, so that's cool. And there you go. Okay, so that's pretty much everything on this screen. I guess I can show you the menu. The menu here, pretty straightforward. It's got a go to forum link, which is, you know, interesting. I guess that way you can go in and see if you're having a problem, if other people are too. Go to settings, volume controls, right here. I've got them pretty much almost all the way down for this purpose controller it just gives you the option for keyboard now I did run a couple races of this already and I can tell you a controller would be awesome it defaults the keys actually to the arrow keys on the keyboard which doesn't work for me with my setup where I have my mouse and everything so I went ahead and switched them over to the ADWS setup handbrake spacebar pretty straightforward um, manual isn't set up I'm just gonna leave it on automatic for now um, insert American joke here about not being able to drive a stick shift, which I can, thank you very much. Reverse camera, that will get you in trouble if you accidentally hit the shift key. Change view, just, you know, I'll show you that when we get in there. Reset, I didn't even notice that one earlier. All right, and escape pauses. All right, so all that's the same. There is this tab, force vibration, which I don't know why that's there. Since it doesn't recognize my controller, which does have, you know, rumble capability, I'm thinking maybe it will support it. Maybe I just don't have the right driver. I don't know. I'll have to do some more research. But for right now, 
stuck with the keyboard. So apply, okay, back to game, let's go race. Now in here, there's just a few race types set up. There's Demolition Derby, 24 cars, 12 cars, Gravel Race 24, Tarmac Race 24, Gravel 12, Tarmac 12, two car, two car, practice, practice. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. Um, let's start off, let's do a Demolition Derby because they're complete and utter bits of chaos. We'll do 12 cars, shifting automatic, traction control on, anti-spin on, and ABS on. You can change all of that, you know, simple on off. I'm not really sure why that's in this menu. To me, well, a lot of that has to do with parts that you have on your car. But, I don't know, for game purposes, I guess that works. All right, let's uh, get into it. And here is our track. Again, this is a Demolition Derby stadium. The goal is to be the last car standing and smash the crap out of everybody else. So, let's do it. There we go. Oh, take them. Now, if you notice over in the left bottom corner, there is a little damage indicator. That kind of gives you a, a rough idea. So, like, my right front is damaged. It's an odd layout, I think. I know a lot of older games that do damage will give you, like, front end indicators as well as rear end. This focuses more on your, your corners. I'm not paying attention. I'm getting my... Hard damage. Alright, so, uh, yeah. You race around, try to hit each other. Take them out. There's currently 11 opponents, so no one has gone out yet. Okay. You can try to take him out. Control-wise, you know, it's not bad. It is a little tough to get control once you get into a wheel spin. Once that happens... Oh, took him down. Excellent. Once, once you get a hang of it, it's not too bad. Handbrake job there. Oh, here's a car. Oh, lost my door. Uh, so you can see, you know, the damage uh, is kind of cool. Real time, real effects. I'm not going to say it's the best. There are some flaws with it. But, again, being an early release, I can kind of overlook that. I see where they're going, and I like it. Now, here's one of my criticisms of the game. Um, if You can't really see the front of my car right now. If you could, well, actually... Oh, there you go. So, yeah, th that's the front of my car. Okay, I'm sorry. There is no way I should be able to drive still. Um, that's just a little ridiculous. I have one tire, yet... I can still turn. Now, it's not easy to turn. Definitely isn't. But, uh, it... It is doable. And that's just odd. It does say I have critical damage up there at the top of the screen. So, I mean, it is a recognizing that, I suppose. But it's still letting me go. And I find that just odd. So some of the damage in this game... is weird. Now, if you've ever been to a real demolition derby and, and ever seen them, you know you really don't want to hit each other with the front of your cars. That's the part that you want to uh, to protect. <laughs> but in my case, uh, you don't. Uh, you just want to smash each other. So it probably wouldn't behoove me to... Oh, there he goes. He got me. All right. So, yeah, I got second place. That's not bad. Took down three people. I'm happy with that. And it does this little overview thing of the track. So, we'll go back to the garage. Now, when I played this earlier, this is where I thought, okay, cool. Now I get to actually see my car and, and, and really see the damage. And then I have to repair it. And, no. Not so much. It goes back to the way it was. Which, you know, is a little disheartening. I guess if you're just doing a practice run or something like that, that's fine. But I really would like to literally have the damaged car sitting here before me and have to, you know, repair it not repair it. 
Uh, again, if, if you've done any real demolition derbies, you'll know that these guys uh, don't always put the cars back to 100%. They just get them running, slap them together, and get them back out there. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, the little car, like I said, it, it corners a little better, a little quicker in places, but it, I don't think it's as tough overall. And then you can see there's some rough stats up here, weight and everything. They're both rear-wheel drive. If I can talk this morning, rear rear wheel drive. Duh, duh. Get that out, Corey. Come on. Uh, it would be nice if they'd included a front wheel drive car, just uh, you know, for a little variety. I mean, they are giving you two cars here in the pre-alpha, so that's cool. But I think a a nice front wheel drive European car could be kind of handy. Um, I don't think actually it would do very well in the demolition derby, but. In the uh, the tracks, it it might might not turn out too bad. Okay, so that was a uh, stadium derby with twelve cars. I did twenty four cars earlier, and wow, did it tank my frame rate. Normally, if I'm not recording, I can run this game actually at around uh, sixty frames per second. Uh, I'm running a it's an older GTX four sixty card, and it does pretty good. Uh, my system's got sixteen megs of RAM and megs gig for him wow flashback to a decade ago uh but yeah anyway so I, i've got a decent enough system uh what with 24 cars with recording this it dropped down to somewhere like 10 right now just sitting here recording you know, i'm running mid 30s low 40s which i'll accept I, I won't get too picky about that so yeah i don't know if that's just a problem with optimization or what have you but be aware of that uh, let's give it a let's actually do a race here let's do a tarmac 12 cars and let's switch up to the little european car shall we give that a shot now the race is a little different you're still accruing damage you can still be knocked out of the race but the goal is like every other race game finish first and here we go it'll do a quick overview of the track I don't really care. Like I said, without the uh, recording software on, this actually looks really smooth, so I'll give them credit for that. Uh, it, it does look nice. I think there's just some optimization issues that hopefully will be taken care of. All right, so here we go. We're in our European car. We can already see trouble up ahead. And, oh, we're getting in trouble ourselves. Now, see, that, that I think is pretty cool. Notice the wall just shattered. That's pretty neat. But, again, at one of my beefs, if you notice the damage indicator, my front end didn't take any damage. At least not damage enough to note. My back did. I, I don't quite understand. I don't know if it's a, a glitch or just something I'm missing. But I can definitely tell you from driving it, my front did take damage. It, the steering is not working right. So I think there might be a bit of a disconnect between the reporting of the damage and the actual visual indicator. Which does seem like it might be something a little complicated to do. Or hit the wall. So, you know, I'll come some slack on that. Ouch. So I did take visible damage there as well as indicated damage. The objects on the road, they don't seem to really cause you too much trouble. They slow you down a bit. Okay, my front end is so out of whack now that I can't actually drive straight. That's going to make the rest of this race significantly more difficult. Now you can pretty much go anywhere, and nearly every object you see will take visible damage from you hitting it. For example... Okay, well that one didn't. That's odd. Okay, so apparently the metal walls don't, but you can knock down those signs, you can smash through those tires, the wooden fences you can smash through, the concrete barricades you can smash. You can actually, and I've done this once, flip over that wall and into the audience doesn't do anything, but you can do it anyway. Trees. Trees don't appear to be affected at all. I have hit one square on, and it just stands there and stares back at me like a smug tree. 
any of these pylons take damage. Oh, in fact, you can even take one out. That is awesome. I had not yet done that. So yeah, I took a pylon out and don't seem to have any uh, problems there. Nice. Getting a little bit of lag there. Again, when you're getting more cars around you, that's where the frame rate really starts to, to go. Now, my understanding is they want to make this game into a multiplayer, which would be really cool. I think that'd be a, a great addition to it. I, one of the reasons I bought this game, it kind of reminded me in spirit to a game I used to have back in early 2000. And I don't even know if it was new then. Uh, someone had given it to me. They had no longer played it and said, here you go. It was Carmageddon 2. Now, for anyone out there who remembers this game, it, it was an insane racing game that you would brace around these tracks and you could do damage to your car, damage other people's cars. You would accrue power-ups, sort of like Mario Kart, um, to take out the other racers. But you also well could run over pedestrians and you got points and style points for doing it and, and whatnot. Now depending on what country you lived in and what version of the game you had uh, they were called zombies and had green blood. The version I had was the totally unrated um, flat out blood and gory person version so I never played the, the other one. I guess it was a bit controversial at the time but uh, the, one of the things that that game did really well was car damage, and reflecting it in a little indicator similar to this, although I think it did better. And yeah, I mean, you could just completely ridiculously drive your car around with bits and pieces bent in weird ways. Um, you, you could have a wheel bent up over the top of your car. Uh, it, it basically... That was a tough hit. It, it basically was a little absurd, so you could... You could have your car just in, in all sorts of bent, torqued out ways. It would still drive. It was a completely unrealistic game, so I accepted it. This one, I kind of feel like some of this damage is completely unrealistic and my car should not be going. <laughs> but I also kind of like it, so I, I'm i torn. If they're going to give you all this really great real physics body damage, yet keep the game in the idea of being realistic, they, they kind of have to walk a very fine line, I guess. Don't make it too fantastic, but yet if you make it too real, you know, everyone's going to be knocked out of the race in, like, the first 30 seconds, and it's not going to be any fun. So there's that, that balance. And you can definitely see the frame rate dropping issues there. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I think that's going to be a big challenge. Is it going to be serious or is it not going to be serious? And maybe that, that maybe that's an option for them. Maybe they'll they'll have a you know an in-game option where you can just play wacky, just a wacky race where you can take insane amounts of damage to your car and still drive somewhat. I mean, look at my car. There, there's no way that should be going. That's just just impossible. That's insane. But again, depending on what you're expecting out of this game, I guess. I guess that's that that that's the big question is what does what do the consumers expect? From what I read, the game is going to be officially released first on PC, and then they're going to port it down to the consoles. Kudos for them for doing it that way, because they even said they're going to give the PC one all the nice bells and whistles and options that you wouldn't be able to do on the console. But I think the console version would have some advantage, and that is they get to use a controller. Uh, but again, I think that's something that can be added and kind of changed in later. So. Finish the race. Let's go back to our garage. And there we go. We're back here. Um, you know, something I uh, should point out that I didn't notice actually until I was racing. In this particular car, the little European car, it's a mid-engine car. I It doesn't tell you that anywhere here, which I find odd. But if you were to look at the little damage indicator down here, the motor was in the back. Um... So, so my critique earlier saying, well, it'd be nice if they'd given you a front-wheel drive car because it does drive differently. They've given you a rear or a, a mid-engine car, which does drive differently. So, okay, you know, good enough. 
Uh, in that case, I would probably suggest doing this one for the Demolition Derby because you can ram everything with the front of it all you want. The motor's back there, so you're not going to blow the motor. So, yeah, there we go. All right, so what do I think about it? Do I like it? Do I not like it? I do like it. I think uh, it has some great potential, and I think it could go some places. I like the look of it. I like the feel of it. Even though the controls are a little funny being on the keyboard, I see where they're going, and I can appreciate it. So I, I think I'll like it. I don't like a lot of racing games because I find most of the racing games just become either too complicated, giving you a bajillion options and things to tweak. If you've ever played a NASCAR racing game, some of them can be so mind-numbing. I, I don't watch NASCAR. I, I like the idea of racing, but I just I don't watch NASCAR. There's a lot of tweaks, a lot of things you can adjust. There's a lot of detail there that makes a lot of difference. Um, but then also the controls usually feel just, I don't know, disconnected. They don't feel good. This one doesn't have a bad feel to it. And, yeah, I, I think it can only get better. So hopefully the developers stay on top of that. Give us some more cars, some more options, flesh out all these things. I'm not sure when the official release date is. If I find that out, I may do another video and kind of update. And if they do provide me with any um, major updates, I may shoot another video just to kind of keep the idea fresh and see where it's going. But yeah, I do look forward to this. Uh, being able to build your garage up, have equipment, have different cars. Sounds like fun. There's a lot of games out there, I guess, that do that. But again, I haven't messed with too many of them because they just annoy me in most cases. But this one, I don't know. This one jumped out at me, said buy me, and I went for it. So there you go. All right, well, there is Next Car Game. I keep calling it The Next Car Game, but I guess it's just Next Car Game. Not sure if that's going to be the title they're going to keep. It's interesting. Kind of different. But there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like it. Go ahead and subscribe. And I'll try to keep more videos like this and my other projects coming right along. Until next time, I'm Corey Lee.